want to take your mind back now to the pandemic and the pain experienced by people separated from their loved ones in care homes. The government says if there's another virus, things will be different and it's consulting on legal changes. Our home and social affairs correspondent, Fiona Lambden, reports. There's live music, barbecues and dancing for residents and their families at this care home in Cheltenham. But three years ago, things looked very different. All care homes were locked down and visitors weren't allowed in. For Hazel and her 96-year-old mum, Barbara, who were used to seeing each other every day, this was very difficult. Her mental health plummeted, actually. It was so very difficult. And then about week six, she rang me and told me I'd abandoned her and that she'd had enough and that we should get on with her own lives. And you can imagine how very, very difficult that was. And there was nothing I could do. I was totally powerless. Hazel was eventually allowed into the care home for the last two weeks of her mum's life. The government proposed last week a change in the law, meaning people in care homes and hospitals will be able to have visitors in all circumstances. But Hazel and other campaigners don't think this goes far enough. What we're wanting with Gloria's law is that every resident will have the right to one essential care supporter. Um, who will be looking after their well-being and mental health. And a visitor doesn't suffice. It has to be one main person. Not everyone is entirely comfortable with the concept of the new law. Jez caught COVID at the start of lockdown and nearly died. My concern would be somebody, one of my residents, ending up like I did. I went into a coma and I was ventilated uh, in hospital. And I'm relatively fit and healthy and I would worry that the residents here, who are some of which are 30, 40 years older than myself, would really struggle. But those at the National Care Forum who advise on policy believe it's possible to do both, keeping residents safe while still allowing visits. I think we've got a lot of research that tells you what happens if you don't dress the wound, but we're not so good at understanding what happens if you don't see the person that you love uh, on a regular basis. And I think if we can get ourselves to that place, and having the regulatory uh, reminder will be a push, but um, most importantly, we know that it's vital for people's lives to be connected with who they love. What would your mother make of the campaigning to change the law so this doesn't happen again? She'd say, I expect you to be doing this. Um, but also I think she'd be really pleased that I was fighting for others. And while everyone hopes we won't have to live through another pandemic, those fighting for the new law say they're not prepared to take that risk and they won't stop till it's passed. Fiona Lambden, BBC Points West. Well, thank you for talking to us, Hazel. I know it's been a very difficult time for you and so many others. And Hazel's MP is the Liberal Democrat Vera Hobhouse, and she's been working with the campaigners to change the law. And I'm delighted to say that she joins me now. Good evening to you. Um, do the government's proposals go far enough for you? So I think uh, we absolutely need to listen to the campaigners and let me first say my heart goes out to the many, many families who've gone through that intense and deep trauma of not being with a loved one through illness um, or even uh, when they died and they couldn't be there. So um, I congratulate Hazel and her campaigners who have uh, put together a fabulous campaign to change the law. Uh, we saw them in Parliament and put uh, their moving sto stories to us and the government has listened and I welcome that. But um, uh, I agree with Hazel, really, we need something uh, that goes further than just a visitor. We need somebody who can be a proper care supporter uh, and can do more than uh, just a visitor, which could be a granddaughter or anybody. We want the essential care supporter to be there and have the right uh, to be um, with somebody who needs the care in a care setting. Uh, the idea at the time, do you remember, was this alleged ring of steel, which was supposed to be thrown round care homes that didn't work there were an awful lot of casualties there if we had another pandemic is it really right that you'd have so many people going in and out well we're not talking about so many people we are talking um, about one essential care supporter for per person uh, and as we've heard in the report um, people know how to dress wounds but um, the wounds the mental wounds that we have we're not the people we know um, and we, 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 we trust um, could be far deeper. And, and therefore it is so, so important as we have learned now uh, that um, people have that at least one direct um, care supporter in, in a hospital or care setting. 
you have then to do to decide who it would be, don't you? And say it's mum in the care home being looked after by three sisters. That's potentially very difficult as well. It shouldn't be um, that difficult. Usually, um, you can you can identify very quickly who has actually been the main caregiver beforehand uh, or is next of kin. Uh, I, I think that sh that should be the least of our problems. We should really listen, obviously, to the campaigners, to the health professionals, but just vi um, extending visiting rights can't be enough. Kira, I mean, we're all learning lessons, but do you wish you said this at the time? Well, we obviously have learned a lot, and um, these lessons have to be taken forward um, into the future. And of course, none of us wants to see a pandemic again. Uh, we're having a COVID inquiry now where we're finding out more and more what has gone uh, not so well. Uh, and therefore, we need to learn these lessons. And clearly, this is one of the lessons uh, that um, people were left on their own. And it has um, caused deep, deep trauma for also the, those families who've been are left bereaved and um, don't have the comfort that they were there in the last moments of their loved ones. And, and that trauma is, is with a lot of...